Hi, this is Pastor John coming to you from the Meditation Gardens here at the Gender Road Christian Church, and I'm glad that you've chosen to take the time to, to watch and participate in the message that God has for you today. One of the ways that you can do that is definitely follow along in your Bible, read the Scripture, pray that the Holy Spirit helps you understand it in a new way. So let's get started. With joy and delight, we gather to praise our holy God, We give thanks that you understand us and encourage us to grow in our knowledge of your holiness. Happy are the people who delight in the word of the Lord and meditate on his ways day and night. The Lord watches over the way of the righteous and invites us to sink our roots deep into his love and holiness. God of wisdom and God of grace, you are the source of our deep-rooted faith and our spirits are refreshed by your presence. So today our scripture comes from Psalms. How many psalms are in the book of Psalms? Anybody know offhand? Well, the, the youth were obviously listening from the first service. <laughs> Let's see if anybody else can um, guess, or I mean knows the answer. Well, it's about 150, 151, generally 151. Yeah, I knew you knew it. Good. <laughs> So when we look at Psalm 1, how many um, books is Psalms divided into? Anybody? Do we have the smartest kids around or what? How many? Five. Excellent. And so the book of Psalms is really broken up into five different books. And so it really, um, when, when you read through them, helps us understand some are meant on praise, some are meant on deliverance, some deals with grief. And so Psalms are meant for us to read them throughout our spiritual time. And it really deals with a lot of the issues that we face every day in life. Because in there, the psalmist cries out, and talks about how he feels like his enemies are oppressing him and how sometimes he'd rather die than deal with what's going on and people are talking about him and making fun of them and dealing with all sorts of troubles. And then the psalmist also talks about the joy of, of living life and what it's like to walk with the Lord and meditate on the Word of God both day and night and feeling those mountaintop experiences. And so the psalmist helps us understand the whole breadth of our human emotions, for we are made in the image of God and, and, and can live through those emotions. And so Psalm 1 invites us then to use the Psalms in this way. Psalms 1 also gives us options, two options really, and says to us that there are two paths that which you can choose to walk, the path of righteousness or the path of wicked. And then as you heard from the scripture being read, the path of the wicked then um, leads to not much. The path of the good, the blessed, leads us to good things. And so the scripture starts off with happier those. Happier those or blessed are those. And not so much in the sense of spiritual or um, um, you know, worldly blessings, but how are we happy? How are we blessed? And so in reading the scripture, I thought we'd go through it again, and it really lends ourselves to looking at the scripture and if we can sort of visualize ourselves walking down these paths. And so we have with us the good tree. Ta-da! The good tree who's planted by the waters, roots running deep, bearing fruit in its season. And then we have over here the not-so-good tree. 
This not so good tree representing the ways of the world, the temptation, those who would lead us astray. And we can see that there are those who are already sitting by this tree. They're captivated. They have chosen to go down this way, this path of the world. And so we start off with our reading. Blessed are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked. So here we have someone. Adrian's walking up. And she's looking, and she's thinking, blessed are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked. And she's trying to decide upon which path will she walk or choose. But the world, the friends, ah, you know, you don't want to go this route. Over here, it's a lot more fun. And so we can see that the psalmist really brings us in sort of a farther outer ring and helps us, then brings us in closer and closer and closer to this bad tree. So it says, blessed are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked. So she's kind of walking around, just glancing at the wrong path, but is being enticed. And then it says, or takes the path that sinners tread. And so now she's standing. Because one of the other translations talks about standing. And so the ways seem really enticing and she's drawn more and more into it and not really even noticing the good path. And the end of verse one says, Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or take the path that the sinners tread or sit in the seat of scoffers. And so eventually we come to where we are now sitting. So we've been kind of walking around this path and glancing at it, and now we're standing, and then eventually we are there fully involved. We're sitting. We are amongst those. We are hanging out. We're fellowshipping with those around this bad tree. And so it says, then continue on in verse 2, but the good, their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. And so now we have Ella, who's coming, choosing, what path will she take? Certainly there are those that are saying, over here, over here. But Ella meditates on the law of the Lord day and night. She, in meditating on the law, she's reading her scripture She's going to church. She's hanging out at Sunday school. She's going to women's circle groups and part of the prayer weavers and doing ministry with the church. And she's just kind of being a nice person and doing what God wants her to do in her life. And so she chooses to go to the good tree. And so the person then who follows the way of, 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 of God are like trees planted by streams of water which yield their fruit in its season. And so the good tree gives good fruit, and we eat. And their leaves do not wither, and all that they do, they prosper. But the wicked are not so. They are like chaff that the wind drives away, and therefore the wicked will not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteousness. Whoa, look at all the wind that's coming. And the temptations of the world blow strong against the good tree temptations, the crud of daily life, people that are saying, hey, here, try this, do that, and those winds go. But because we meditate on the law of the Lord, on our scriptures, it's not budging us, and soon they get tired. Whew, tired. But they see other places they can go. The bad tree and those that do not follow the way of the Lord and do not have scripture or God in their life and the winds blow against them and the temptations and they're like the chaff that dries up and the winds blow them away and the wicked are no more. You know, what do we as humans want from life? What do we want from life? Perhaps it's to know God or to do good. You know, most of us would probably settle for just having a happy life, to having a life that's blessed. And so the psalm invites us to look at how do we live our lives? How do we live our lives? How, what makes us happy? Because it says in the psalm that they, are, they prosper in all that they do. And so we have to start looking at what is really the definition of happiness. 
Certainly there is here, and the Hebrew looks at a happiness, and, and, and more of a happiness than a blessedness, and it's prospering in what? What do we do in life? And so we have that choice. What is going to make us happy? The ways of God or the ways of the world? The Reverend Dr. Marty Stussy in, in her book writes that humans tend to seek happiness in the wrong ways, and that we may scoff at, at our faith's seemingly impractical instructions and accept advice that leads us to do wrong. Psalm 1 warns us against mistaken routes to happiness. And so we see in the psalm that we have a choice. And it asks us to consider the teachings of, of God and what we read in the Bible and what we discern in our prayer life. To discern that the way life is lived is decisive for how it turns out. So that as you, as you are living your life, how is life turning out for you? What are you dealing with day in and day out? Are you coming across the same problems? Are you able then to meditate in God's scripture, taking time to put God at the center of your life? Where, what path are you taking? Now, the interesting thing is se seldom of us ever decide just one day, well, I'm going to take the path of the wicked, right? I mean, most of us right now would say we're on the righteous path. And so the righteous and the wicked really we see these two groups of people. And the righteous are those that turn to God. The righteous are those that try to follow God, that are reading the Bible, that are doing those things that, that seem to be part of their Christian faith and their understanding of what God is teaching us. When we hear in the psalm that meditates on the law of, of God, here those ancient scriptures would have referred to the Torah. And Torah means to teach or to instruct. You see, the Torah that was given to the Hebrews was really a, um, an instrument of grace, a way to, for the people to help them understand God's love for them. Paul, the Apostle Paul in Romans talks about how the law is good, just, and holy. And so we can see the law is really those first five books of Moses, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. We can also see it as the general teachings that we have throughout all of scriptures and in the New Testament. And do we meditate that on both day and night? Do we meditate on those teachings? How are they instructing? One of the pastors talks about how if we meditate on the teachings of God, it structures our consciousness. It structures our consciousness. In other words, as we read, it comes into our psyche. It comes into our soul. It comes into our spirit. It comes into our decision-making process and structures how we respond to life. Because seldom of us would ever just say, well, you know what, I'm going to turn away. Usually it's a gradual process. Oh, I've gotten really busy at work. I've gotten really busy at home. There's a lot of problems happen. I'm not going to go to church today or I'm not going to go to the Bible study today. I'm, I don't have time anymore to participate in this group over here that used to give me life, that used to give me grace, that used to be part of my spiritual disciplines. And then all of a sudden, when somebody says, hey, it's, maybe it's school, they're like, try this, do that. You don't want to be friends with that person over there. It becomes easier for us to say, yeah, okay, you're right. And next thing you know, this fruit, the rivers, the life-giving waters of God are farther and farther away, and we move over into here to where the ground is arid, where the seeds don't grow, where our roots don't grow deep, because we are tossed about by the winds of change or whatever is being tempted against us. You see, the wicked in here are those, they really serve several purposes in the Psalms. One is they create the tension between humankind's will and the will of God. They serve as a way to make it look like the providence of God or the love of God or God's movement in your life really isn't going to happen. That's the role of the wicked in the Psalms. Yeah, they're the people that get you thinking, yeah, you know, maybe there isn't a God. Now, I'm not saying anything earth-shattering here. You can see it all over the news and social media and whatever, there's plenty of people, even nice people, 
that don't have faith, that don't believe in God, that believe we're just here by chance. But God says, what are you discerning on the inside? As you read the scriptures, as you read your Bible, as you interact, do you sense that you are made in my image and that you are made with love so that when you become the tree, are you like the tree that's planted by the waters whose leaves do not wither, who produce fruit? You see, when we're following God and we're making these decisions, day in and day out, we have that choice. You know, what is it, Charlotte, that you said to the kids? Yeah, you can act it out. Okay, Charlotte's going to be the good one. Not sure how that happened, but okay. Okay, you're the good one. So you're at school, right? I'm at school. Okay, so I'm the bad one. Hey, uh, Charlotte, why don't you cut class and we'll go to Dairy Queen? No, I'm not going to do that, no. Well, uh, why don't you sneak out of the house tonight and, and we'll go smoke a cigarette? No, no, I'm not doing that. Why not? Why not? Yeah. Because I am like a tree planted by the water. <laughs> like a tree who yields its fruit in season. Oh. Like a tree whose leaf does not wither. And everything I do prospers. So you can be good. I have a choice. Yes, you have a choice. Okay, great. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. We did not rehearse that. <laughs> in case you were wondering. <laughs> the tree whose roots are planted by the water. You know, we see that tree, but what we don't see are all the roots that are underneath the ground, right? We don't see what's feeding that tree. Right now, it's dry outside, isn't it? And on those warm days, we can see where the leaves are slightly withered because of the hot sun, right? I can even see cracks in the dirt outside. It's dry. We can see the trees starting to wither. I've cut trees down at home, clearing out some of the back property. Those trees have withered up because they've been cut from their roots. The roots are no longer feeding them. But you see, as those who choose to follow God, those roots run deep, and those roots are being fed by God's Holy Spirit, feeding you, encouraging you, helping you, giving you water. And so what we don't see is when we encounter a lot of people in the world is, by what stream are they planted? Where are their roots coming from? Who is feeding them? Who is nourishing them? I want to read to you a quote. It's from a lady who lived, whose neighbors had a large, large tree. And she woke up one morning, saw all kinds of commotion and heard a chainsaw and everything, and looked out her bedroom window and saw that the large tree that was outside her window, just in her neighbor's yard, was being cut down. And within a few hours, the tree was no longer there. And she said, although the visible presence of the tree has been removed, I knew that beneath the surface, the roots still spread over as large an area as the tree occupied above the ground level. A massive root system still existed. A part of the tree still remained, a very important part. Psalm 1 reminds me that the Lord sees those who trust in him as trees planted by the rivers of water, solid, strong, unmoving, unchanging in spite of the storms of life because they are rooted in God through Christ. I couldn't help but wonder about the time when I'm gone from this earth and there is no visible evidence that I have been here. What will remain to tell others that I have lived? It gives me great joy to know that something will remain. The root system of my faith will keep on growing as I have shared it with others and they will with still with others share it. My faith and hope will be here when I am gone. What choice will you make? What path will you take? Amen.
I love being outside and being surrounded by God's creation. And I pray that today's message has been a blessing in your life. And I look forward to hearing from you or someday being able to speak with you about how God has been part of your life today.